Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we'll talk now about uh, the pathophysiology of RB and VEGF phases uh, by Sarah Maher, uh, lecturer of ophthalmology, Cairo University. RB is a retinal vasoproliferative disease. It is a major cause of blindness in children in the developed and the developing world. And although the ablation treatment of the retina reduced incidence of RB, reduced incidence of blindness by 25% in those who reach late, late stage disease, the visual outcomes after treatment are often poor. So preventive therapy for ROV would, would, would be far preferable. We have to understand the pathogenesis. As we all know, the retina receives its blood supply from both the choroidal and the retinal circulation. The choroidal circulation is complete prior to the 20 weeks of gestation and therefore prior to the survivable premature birth. However, the retinal circulation arising from the optic nerve head is just uh, beginning to develop at this time a vascular bed and thus is involved in ROP pathogenesis. Uh, and this explains how the blood vessels grow from the optic nerve head uh, toward the periphery. As the neural retina develops anterior to the vasculature, there is increased oxygen demand which creates localized hypoxia and this will increase the VEGF. VEGF is expressed and the blood vessels grow toward the VEGF stimulus, where the hypoxia is relieved by oxygen from the newly developed vessels, uh, the expression of VEGF decreases and the wave stops and transmitted forward. And there are two theories that explain the pathogenesis of RP, the classic theory of the hyperoxia and the spandle cell or the gap junction theory. As regarding the spandle cell theory, activity of the mesenchymal spandle cell precursors of the retinal capillaries Accordingly, these cells migrate centrifugally from the optic disc uh, toward the junction between the vascularized and non-vascularized retina form capillary network. Well, under the hyperoxic conditions, abnormal gap junctions appear between the adjacent spandle cells and this interfere with the normal cellular migration and vascular formation. RP is a disease of two phases. Phase one, in premature infants, normal retinal vascular growth that would occur in neutral stops, and there is loss of some of the developed vessels. However, in phase two, with maturation of the infant, the resulting non-vascularized retina become increasingly metabolically active and hypoxic with hypoxia-induced retina neovascularization. We'll talk now about the different cytokines and the roles in the, and the role in the development of RP. First, the vascular endothelial growth factor. In phase one, uh, the hyperoxia, uh, because of the supplemental oxygen, will suppress the normal vascular endothelial growth factor driven vessel growth, and this will result in vasoobliteration apoptosis of the vascular endothelial cells. However, in phase two, uh, the VEGF is an hypoxia inducible cytokine, uh, and uh, that will promote neovascularization. Despite the controlled use of supplemental oxygen, the disease persists as ever more immature infants are saved suggesting that other factors related to the prematurity itself are also at work. So it is a multifactorial disease. As regarding uh, the other cytokine, uh, the other important cytokine, which is a growth hormone and the insulin-like growth factor one, in phase one of the disease, uh, the insulin-like growth factor one levels uh, decrease after birth due to loss of that provided uh, by the placenta and the amniotic fluid. Uh, also, the, the level is suppressed by poor nutrition, sepsis, and acidosis, and all these are risk factors for the development of RP. Uh, Insulin-like growth factor 1 is critical for the normal retinal vascular development as it controls the maximum VEGF activation of the endothelial cell survival pathway. However, in phase 2, it starts to increase, the levels of endothelial uh, insulin-like growth factor 1 start to increase, acting as a permissive function uh, when it reaches the threshold level, it results in vigorous activation of the vascular endothelial growth factor, uh, resulting in retinal angiogenesis, uh, a new vascularization, and is considered an anti-hypoxia regulated factor for RB development. And this diagram explains uh, the different uh, uh, the, the effect of the different factors and their levels uh, during the different phases of the disease. In neutral, for normal vessel development. There should be normal levels of both the insulin-like growth factor one and the, and the vascular endothelial growth factor. As the baby is born prematurely, uh, the normal vascular development stops. There is decreased level of insulin-like growth factor one, 
and decreased level of vascular endothelial growth factor. With, uh, at, the, at the maturing retina uh, or the neural retina start to uh, develop, uh, there is relative hypoxia, and this results in uh, increase in the expression of vascular endothelial growth factor associated with a slow increase in insulin -like growth factor 1. When the insulin -like growth factor 1 reaches the threshold level, uh, for the activation of the vascular endothelial growth factor, this results in vigorous retinal neovascularization, which is responsible for all the complications of ROP. Uh, there is presumed genetic factors for uh, retinopathy of prematurity. Uh, though there is a strong evidence for the genetic predisposition for ROP at the racial differences and the high rate uh, among monozygotic twins, till now no specific genetic variants with strong association with ROP have been detected. Uh, and after understanding the pathophysiology, we, we will show this how it's applied clinically, the clinical applications of uh, the understanding of the pathophysiology of ROP. The first uh, important clinical application is the timing. The timing is critical to any intervention. Inhibition of either the JEF or insulin like growth factor 1 early after birth will alter the normal blood vessel growth and precipitate the disease, where inhibition at the second neovascular phase might prevent the destructive neovascularization. So when to stop LVJF is seriously very important. Also, another important clinical application is the oxygen delivery that should be monitored carefully. And despite several ra large randomized control studies comparing the different target ranges for oxygen saturation, the ideal ranges remain controversial. The third clinical application is the risk prediction models. Today, the established screening criteria for ROB are the birth weight and the gestational age. However, the extremely preterm infants who are at high risk of developing ROP are extremely fragile. And the ROP eye examination is really painful and stressful procedure. So to reduce the number of unnecessary screening examinations, these risk production models have been invented. They incorporated other factors like the weight gain rate. And the, the, the famous or the most famous of these production models is the online monitoring tool in WENROP, which was developed in Gothenburg in Sweden is based on longitudinal weekly weight measurements of the infant, and it gives an alarm if the, uh, the, if the preterm infant is at risk of developing sight threatening ROP. Maybe in the coming future, uh, we, we can develop physiological replacement of interligrous factor one to the levels found in YouTube to prevent the disease by allowing normal vascular development, or the use of agents which promote uh, normal vessel survival without new vascularization. Thank you very much.